solidarity with uh, anti-fascist counter-protesters in London today. Maybe we'll see some Nazis get punched, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm sorry about the title. I don't, I don't really like J.K. Rowling that much, but as my friend who has actually seen the movie put it, something good should come out of that movie. Um, <laughs> I haven't seen it, so maybe it's good. So um, there's going to be three stages to this. Uh, I'm going to show you a ton of examples of really cool, interesting Twitter bots. Incidentally, I'm not really interested in like spam bots or marketing bots or anything like that. I'm interested in bots as a medium for art and poetry. And that's what we'll be looking at. Next, I'm going to uh, talk about a few of the issues of etiquette, ethics, and politics that have come up. And finally, I'm going to try and convince you that like, you should make your own. But to be honest, we're going to spend the most time in the examples part, because that's the really fun part. Um, there's, like, the, the heavy issues stuff is, is going to be fairly brief to be honest. There's just too many bots to get through. There, there are so many, and they're so good. Um, so uh, the first type I'm going to talk about is maybe kind of the purest, simplest, like most, um, most kind of prototypical uh, Twitter bot, which is the type that just generates text. Um, here's a very famous example, Think Piece Bot, which kind of um, impersonates a um, baby, baby boomer who for some reason still has a job writing columns for a newspaper. <laughs> and it comes out with stuff like, what if doctors prescribe cupcake shops instead of pills? Or millennials just need to empathize with racists. <laughs> or let's talk about a vegan diet, not fascism. <laughs> or our teens getting high on Bitcoin. <laughs> so then um, there's um, kind of less, less comedically, there's um, things like poem.exe, which I really, really love, um, made by Inky, which generates poems. Things like snow, we swear our love. And yet, snow. Smoke-scented air. Clothes cast off. Naked rider. <laughs> and my personal favorite, great moon. <laughs> Each time. <laughs> it's just it's beautiful. Um, there's the, um, uh, a lot of Twitter bots, what they do is they take two things and juxtapose them in order to create comedy or poetry. Um, this is two headlines by, uh, by Darius Kazemi, which comes up with um, headlines such as Santa Claus secures additional $75 million in funding, NASCAR legend William Shakespeare dies at age 74, <laughs> and time gets slammed for naming white nationalist person of the year. <laughs> of course, the bot kind of messed up here because this did actually happen, right? <laughs> We all, we all know who I'm talking about, don't we? That's right, Winston Churchill. <laughs> so um, there's the type of bot that attempts to kind of exhaust a space of content. This is Every Word, the most famous one, which for seven years tweeted every single word in the English alphabet, I mean, or in a particular dictionary, in lexicographical order, of course, Lexicographical order is um, complicated and uh, uh, you know, defined differently by different people. So when every word got to the end of the alphabet um, and tweeted the word Zimaji, it uh, half an hour later came out with eclair. And then, <laughs> and then ran through a bunch of other accented E words uh, before finally finishing. Um, there have been many, many tributes to every word, of course. There's fuck every word. Um, some of its most popular tweets being fuck cancer, fuck capitalism, fuck depression, and fuck everything. <laughs> sort of a synecdoche for the entire bot, really, which is great. There's um, one of my favorites is uh, every witch word. And what I love about every witch word, which just puts a word in front of the word witch, is the way, is the way people relate to it. Um, people see an every witch word tweet and they'll be like, that's me. So there's like, cool witch, AKA me. <laughs> Defeated witch, me. <laughs> Mucus witch, me right now. <laughs> Dessert witch, me. <laughs> and shit post witch, <laughs> me, me, me. <laughs> A lot of these uh, categorical terms, by the way, were defined in this really good blog post, some strategies of bot poetics, which lists a ton more bots and uh, kind of goes into some really interesting uh, detail about them. I'll put the title up again at the end. Um, a really fascinating and kind of un underused, um, underpopulated genre is the kind of collective unconscious bot. So this is Glitch, made by Thrice Dotted, which uh, pretends to be a cat. 
uh, and it does things in asterisks, like uses your laptop as her pillow, or flips out for some reason, or sleeps all over you, and sometimes just like confesses things, like I'm tired of chasing after mice. And it was incredible. It have, had us all baffled when it came out because like, it had such a wide variety of things it could say. It could not possibly be generated from like, a finite corpus uh, or some kind of Markov chain or any, um, any kind of uh, like, algorithmic generation technique. And um, what uh, I eventually realized, uh, with some help from uh, the creator, Thrice, is that what it was doing was searching for people tweeting about their cats and then rewording those tweets. So this happens because, so this uses your laptop as her pillow happened because someone tweeted, my cat is using my laptop as her pillow. And then it just finds that, rewords it, and puts it in asterisks. Um, it's brilliant. So it's basically the collective unconscious of all cats worldwide that are <laughs> tweeted about. Um, so I was so enamored with this that uh, I made my, um, my own version of it and just um, basically the same technique, in fact, the same code, and just swapped out the noun. So this is your butt. <laughs> your butt spends a lot of time changing in size, um, gets huge shrinks. Um, it sometimes does completely unexpected things, like studying for chemistry. Um, <laughs> And its opinion of itself is all over the place. Sometimes it's like, I'm pretty. Sometimes it's like, I'm sad. And sometimes it's kind of, um, kind of aloof, like, I'm nice, bye. Um, so yeah. Um, anyway, moving on from text, there's um, a ton of uh, bots out there that generate images as well. This is uh, Many Gradients by V21. I think it's really, really beautiful. It just comes out with these really simple circular gradients. It's a very, very kind of calming effect. Um, I, I retweet many gradients a lot of the time, probably more than any other Twitter account, because uh, I think it's really nice to just have more kind of vapor wavy gradients in your timeline. At the far other end of the complexity scale, there's Moth Generator by Katie Rose Pipkin and Lauren Schmidt, which generates these incredible, beautiful, complicated, very realistic looking moths, and even comes up with names in English and Latin for them. This one down here is called the Great Showy Bright Wood Moth or cododactyla eruptor. So um, that's, that's absolutely beautiful. There are bots which process images. So you give them an input, such as a picture of a cube, and then the bad PNG bot, which converts it to a PNG, glitches that PNG, and then uploads that back, um, will turn it into this amazing mess of color. There's um, WordPad bot, which I made, which um, you, give it a, you give it an image, and it simulates the effect of opening that image up in WordPad in Microsoft Windows, um, letting it do its, like, I'll fix up the text for you thing, and then, <laughs> and then saving it, which often gets you these kind of weird melty wraparound things. There are uh, bots which work on animated GIFs. This is Data Masha, one of mine. Oh, good, it works. Um, which uh, uses, uses a technique called data moshing. You remove keyframes from a video, and because of the way that video is encoded as motion, you end up with, like, the background turning into R2-D2. Um, there's, uh, I also made Slit Scanner, which applies a kind of time delay effect, um, kind of similar to your iPhone's rolling shutter. If you ever take a photo out of like a fast-moving car, you'll notice that everything's leaning because it's delayed in time. And this does the same thing, but in real time to an animated GIF. So it kind of turns Carrie Fisher's head into a kind of rubbery, uh, uh, rubbery cylinder. Um, a really interesting type of bot is the type that exists purely to waste the time of uh, assholes on the internet. So um, this is a bot which pretends to be a fundamentalist Christian and baits uh, self-righteous like Twitter atheists into arguing with it. So uh, it'll say something like, evolution is sad, and then a Twitter user called more moral than God will, uh, <laughs> will attempt to argue with it, and all it will do is say, that is incorrect. Or, and they'll keep going, like, they're like, Jesus really does care. And it's like, evolution has nothing to do with Jesus. And like, that is wrong. <laughs> they keep going, it's fantastic, because it's like a heat sink. It just like takes their attention away from like, people that they might otherwise be like, harassing for real. So it's, it's, it's really doing some good. Anyway, so that, that's like a really, really quick overview of uh, a bunch of bots. There are so many I didn't have time to mention. Um, but I have, you know, this is AlterConf, and I have to talk about issues. So um, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to talk about some issues now. we we'll start with this fairly innocent one, like, when is it okay for a bot to reply to a tweet? This is something that if you make a Twitter bot, you will probably have to decide. Um, I've come up with particular rules for my own bots. 
Um, if you have just tweeted directly at it, then it's obviously okay for the bot to reply to you. That's how you interact with it. Um, if you follow the bot and you've done a like public tweet on your timeline, then it is usually okay for it to re reply to you. It shouldn't do it too often, but it definitely depends on the content, and I'll get to that bit in a moment. It depends on the content of your tweet primarily, um, and also the content of the bot's tweet, obviously. Um, outside of that, just they should not do it. And there are bots that break these rules, and they're awful, and I hate them. Um, the Red Scare bot, you've probably, if you've ever mentioned the word like communism or socialism, you'll have been like retweeted by Red Scare bot, and it's really annoying. Like, um, you should never, never, like, bots should not talk to strangers. So I said, depending on the content, um, because this is an issue, sometimes um, a bot will reply lightheartedly to serious uh, or upsetting tweets, and that's not okay. Um, so you need to use a heuristic and you need to you be like as conservative as possible. Like if in doubt, just don't reply because like it doesn't matter if your bot doesn't reply, like no one cares. Um, so the heuristics I use, um, your bot only replies to tweets that contain the word but or buts, which I think is fine. Like as far as I know, people don't generally like make a really serious uh, or upsetting tweet containing the word but. Um, <laughs> it's, it's worked so far. Um, uh, slip scanner and data mosher obviously only reply to animated GIFs, and generally speaking, it's the same. Like, if, you, if there's an animated GIF in your tweet, it's probably like okay to respond to it. And WordPad, because it could theoretically reply to anything with an image in it, that's way too broad, and so it just doesn't reply to timeline tweets at all. Um, uh, another problem that will come up with bots is that if it has, uh, if it has kind of a corpus of input that is like you know something generated by humans, like text, novels, other tweets, that kind of thing then uh, it might well reproduce um, problems in the input, um, problems here um, being a, a polite euphemism for like racism or sexism and that kind of thing. Famously, Microsoft put out an AI chatbot on Twitter and like, well, the Verge headline says it all. Twitter taught Microsoft's AI chatbot to be a racist asshole in less than a day because there are Nazis on Twitter, and if your bot doesn't care who it's talking to, it'll, it'll talk to Nazis, and then if it learns from the people it talked to, it'll become a Nazi, and that fucking sucks. Um, I've made a little inspirational like, kind of poster for this you can put on your wall if you like. Um, software reproduces oppression unless explicitly designed not to do so. So, like, explicitly design it not to do so, please. There's also the problem that even if um, the input is innocent, a bot through juxtaposition, through accident, through uh, reconfiguration or just decontextualization can kind of create something that is not okay. Um, this was a problem with two headlines where it used to accidentally misgender people. It would say like, name of male celebrity looks stunning in her red carpet dress, which is like not really okay because this is a bot that exists mostly for the purposes of humor um, and like, who's laughing at a joke like this? Like, if the wrong people are laughing at it, then like you're doing something wrong. So um, Darius recognized this and uh, wrote a really good blog post on how he taught it to mostly avoid doing that. And of course, the solution generated false positives, uh, but that's fine. It, like, always err on the side of not tweeting if uh, if what you're risking is something much worse. There is also um, a, a kind of more general blog post about um, the way that bots should behave. From a um, from a point of view of like punching up or down, called bot bot sh should punch up. Um, that is also really good. I'll put both of those titles back up at the end again. Uh, you don't have to take them down now. Okay. So finally, I want to try and convince you to make your own. Um, it's uh, absurdly easy. Um, if you've not heard of cheap bots done quick, then you should go there today. It's really really good. Um, it's made by uh, George, who made the many. Uh, many gradients bot I showed you earlier. It's also behind Think Peace bot, Magic Realism bot, and loads and loads of other really cool bots as well. It's really, really good. It's really, really easy. You don't have to do programming. I mean, you have to, but there is like JSON involved, but that's not technically programming, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> no, it, seriously, it's, it's really easy. You should give it a try. Um, lots of people have made lots of really, really good, like genuinely, um, genuinely fun bots with it. Um, it's also really fun to make them. You get to see your friends interact with them in front of you on the timeline, and it's really cool. Um, it's also a very forgiving medium. Like, if your bot falls over, no one really cares. Like, no one's, like, no, uh, like, 
if a web page breaks, then like you get annoyed because like, I was expecting this to do something and it's like throwing an error back in my face. But if you like send something to a bot and then just like forget about it, then you probably won't even remember if it never like responds to you. So it's fine. Like they break, <laughs> they break very gracefully is what I'm saying. And uh, it's really good. A bot is also like a really good way to explore a like kind of silly idea you might have for a thing. Um, it might turn into a really good bot. It might also turn out to be too large for a Twitter bot, and then you'll decide to like move it out of that medium into uh, into something more serious. If you do want to get involved, there's a really good Slack. Go to slack.botally.net. Um, it's a great bunch of folks. We have a code of conduct. Um, uh, it's a, it's a good one as well. Like you know, there's some thought has gone into it. Um, there are good moderators, and people are very, very helpful and share a lot of techniques and things. Um, and that's kind of it, really. The last slide is just everything that I referenced, so that if you want to take like one picture to like encompass the entire thing and like go home and study it, then you can uh, then you can do that. I'm Armand on Twitter, as I have uh, delineated in Emoji Sparkles, and that's me. Thanks very much.